guys, my name is Rick Stone. I am from the blog OurStoneyAcres.com. Welcome to Grow What You Eat, Eat What You Grow, our video series where we talk about all things vegetable gardening. Yesterday was just a beautiful day. It was glorious. It was like 70 degrees outside, no wind, a perfect spring day. This is what my garden looks like today. Yep, that's right, snow. So we went from 70 degrees to snow in one day, and that's just spring for us. And so we have a lot of struggles here in the springtime to get crops going early and quickly. And we have a very favorite dish that my wife makes in June, and we usually eat it four or five times, and, and we call it cream peas and potatoes. And it's just awesome. It's uh, fresh garden peas with potatoes and this just delicious white sauce, and it's awesome. We love it. And for a lot of years, we would just use grocery store potatoes and then our fresh garden peas. But then we got thinking, well, that's kind of defeating the purpose, isn't it? Because we have all of these fresh peas, but we're not using fresh garden potatoes. So I decided that I needed to figure out how to have potatoes ready in mid-June along with the peas. And so let's head out to the garden and I'll show you the trick that I came up with. So these are our garden cold frames and we, we have a garden that grows all winter long. And in this particular cold frame every year there are carrots. And of course that gets rotated around the garden, but the carrots are usually done about the 1st of March, at the latest the middle of March. And so that cold frame is empty. And so as what we do is we are using this cold frame to get an extra early start on potatoes. Now remember, potatoes are fairly frost sensitive. They're not the most frost sensitive plant out there, but they don't particularly like frost and it really sets them back if they get frost. So we use the cold frame to get us a two month head start on our potatoes. So we grow using the hill method. So we simply just dig two four inch trenches in the, the sides of the cold frame. And then we put a little compost in the bottom of the trench so that there's plenty of organic matter you can see and then you can see we just lay the potatoes out and really quick, uh, if you have bigger potatoes, of course those of you that grow potatoes know that you can actually cut the potato and uh, use the two halves and, and a plant will grow from each of those. I usually don't cut them more than in half and you need to make sure that there's at least two or three eyes on each of the halves before you cut it. But then you just go ahead and lay those out in the trench and you can see they're really close together. See how close we have them planted together? That's because we're not worried about growing big potatoes. We're worried about little new potatoes and that's what we want to go with those fresh peas. So we're not fussed about a lot of space and so we really cram the potatoes in there so that we can get a lot of new potatoes out of this cold frame. Then all you do is simply cover the cold frame up, uh, cover up the, the potatoes with about an inch to an inch and a half of soil tamp it down a little bit and then I put the lids on the cold frame and just let them go. It doesn't matter how warm it is or how cold it is, the, the lids just stay on the cold frame until the potatoes start to sprout. Then once the potatoes start to sprout, as soon as they sprout, we cover them up again. And then when the, they come out of the soil again, we cover them up again. And then we cover them up again until we start to build a hill. Now in the cold frame, it's pretty tight. Um, normally our hills would be, you know, 12 to 15 inches tall. We really can't get them that tall in a cold frame, but we still go ahead and hill them up as much as we possibly can. Eventually you're not going to be able to put the lids on the cold frame anymore, but usually this is about the time that it's warmed up and your threat of frost is gone, but you still need to watch out because remember potatoes are fairly sensitive to that frost. So if you have a frosty night and you can't get the lids on the cold frames anymore because the potatoes are bursting out, then you need to go ahead and put some heavy fabric row cover or something over them to protect them during the night. Doing this, getting this extra early start means that you know, the potatoes are starting to flower in mid-May and by the middle of June when our peas are done, we already have new potatoes growing and so we'll start harvesting them then. We'll usually harvest from this cold frame for about a month, usually mid-July before we're finished, and a four by eight cold frame with two eight foot rows will produce somewhere between 35 to one year we had 55 pounds of potatoes. All kind of depends on how long you leave them in the ground because they will continue to get bigger and bigger. 
This is an awesome way to get an extra early start on your potatoes, so I'd suggest you do it. Now, cold frames are kind of the important part. You could try it in a hoop house if you live in a fairly mild, like a zone six or a zone seven, but if you live in a five, four, three, you need to you know, you need to use a cold frame. And then you're gonna to want to adjust. You know, we plant our, those potatoes on March 15th. But if you live in a zone four or a zone three, it might be April 15th or even later. But this will give you a solid two months head start on your potato crop. And it's a good way to get a nice early harvest of potatoes. So that's it for this week. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And over here, don't forget to, oh, let's see, there we go, right there. Make sure you go and visit our blog, ourstonyacres.com. And if you liked what you saw here, then you should go right here and check out my video courses. I have a whole series of gardening video courses that teach you everything from the basics of gardening to PVC drip irrigation, seed starting, year-round gardening, all kinds of different topics. If you click right here on this link, it'll take you to my blog where you can then check out the video courses and buy them there. And for everybody that's a YouTube subscriber, there is a special discount on those courses. So please go check them out and see what you think. That's it for this week. Happy gardening.